Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And it is spring. It's here. So the planting season, full swing. I The 10-day forecast looks really, really nice. I mean, this is what we want. And so I, I would say if you're starting to plant your summer plants, uh, go sparingly. So don't commit all of the gardens to your tomatoes and peppers and eggplants. And we even had tomatillos, all kinds of the summer plants came in this week, fully stocked. So the, the storms that we had last March, it was dark and gray and that held the, the, the plants back and the greenhouses. So they just weren't, they need sunlight. They need sunlight to come through that glass in the greenhouse and it wasn't happening. And so finally, the last few weeks have been beautiful and the plants are just, they're just shooting up new growth. It's very exciting. So this week we had all of the annual flowers show up. All of the herbs, well, a lot of herbs show up. A lot of the vegetable plants show up. Not just the cool season, also the summer season plants. So there's a the locals here in the at least central highlands, I know you're tuned in from all over the place. Um, if you're in the central highlands, the locals use Mother's Day as the demarcation line for planting summer plants. Well, that's a month away. I don't know, ten, three, four weeks away. And so uh, that's usually the last frost of spring. That's 100 years of data we've been gathering, and typically the last frost is Mother's Day. It's actually May 8th, uh, May 10th in Prescott, May 8th in Prescott Valley, Chino Valley, and so it's just right there about Mother's Day. And so the locals, you'll hear this often, and so before that, you're planting spring things. So for in, the, in the flower garden, it'd be pansies and kale, and you could probably plant geraniums and petunias. They'll take some frost. They love spring. In the vegetable garden, you'd plant lettuce and broccoli and cauliflower and artichokes and, and rhubarb. Those are all spring plants. They love the bright days and cool nights. Tomatoes don't like that. They like it to be above 45 degrees all the time. If you're cold outside at 2 a.m. at night, and so are they. And so you want to... We could still see one last frost one last storm one last it's we're notorious for this feels beautiful it's glorious um I, and then all of a sudden this last frost comes in and kills off those early season plants what i'm doing in my own gardens is i have started to plant some of my vegetables that are summer summer plants yes it's risky uh, the average frost is around mother's day but you know what I'm on a radio show. I've got podcasts and videos I'm doing. I, I need to get, there's bragging rights in the garden community. You've got to get up and, you know, in June, July, you got to go, oh, wow. I just picked my first tomato and it was so good. It melted in my mouth. Oh, how's your gardens doing? There's this, there's this competitiveness that, that gardeners have. And so, and if, if I need to get on the airwaves and just brag about it, show it off, show you walk, tour you through my gardens and show it on an Instagram story uh, post or Facebook post. And so I want to get started some. So what I did is I put plant protectors. I've got many of them. These are uh, kind of mini greenhouses that you throw around these summer plants because they want the soil to be hot, warm. They want the air to be warm. They want it to be warm. They like snuggly. They're like lizards crawling up on a rock and just warming up. That's what your summer gardens love. Lettuce doesn't like that. Cauliflower doesn't like that. It'll bolt. Broccoli will bolt into flower. So they, they like it cold. And so they're actively growing right now very quickly. Uh, but as soon as summer hits, they bolt out on you. They just start to They lose their flavor. The lettuce goes off flavored. They like it cold. They're spring plants. The summer plants love it hot. They want it really hot. They want it to be in the 80s, low 90s. They want it to be summer. 
And so these plant protectors kind of create a little bubble around them that keeps them warm. Um, if you're planting, I, I plant a few out there, not the entire garden. I'm going to put a few test victims out there so in case I do get a hard frost. I've seen it snow on Mother's Day of all things. That's possible. Doesn't look like it. Looks like the 10 day is looking really good. So a gardener, I mean, come on, I'm a gardener. You got to plant something. It's good. So I just don't go all in. Plant pieces of it. Put it in, in rotation. Put it in, rotate your crops. Put a few out this week, a few out next week, and just slowly fill the garden up. That's a good way to approach it. And then always have boxes or sheets or quilts. Any If it does get cold, something you can throw over those plants to get them through the night, to keep them warm. That's if you got if you're just ready for it and you're monitoring the the weather. I think you can go ahead and plant. I just 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 advice. I've planted. I've gone all in about I don't know seven eight years ago. I went all in. I said the weather looks fine. I'm going. Planted the whole garden. Frost came like ten days later. Killed off half the garden. I mean, no matter what I did, it just got so cold. It was so snowy. Uh, so I kind of learned. My name's Ken. We're just friends. We're, we're talking over the back fence. Here's what's worked for me. I think it'll work for you too. So I think you can plant some, but but just go go with three tomato plants, not 10. I mean, if you're going to plant 10, just put three in this week, three in next week. We'll have plenty. I've had thousands of tomatoes show up this week. I've got more coming next week, even more coming. Uh, we kind of crescendo up to about Mother's Day. And then we just I fully stocked. We're just crammed full. There's no room anywhere. Actually, that's what it is right now. There's no room at the garden center. It's all plants. It's kind of exciting. I think you could go ahead and plant some. Same with those summer flowers. So we got our first dahlias in. Dahlias are typically May flowers. Well, they're so pretty uh, that, that I, I love dahlias. It's one of my favorite flowers, annual flower. Uh, we've got them in full bloom. These are dinner plates and just regular dwarfed pom-pommed dahlias. These are typically plants that like the summer. They don't like the frost. And so I put some in. I was showing them off on our Instagram post. It had like 200 likes. It just, it's such a pretty flower. It's crazy. Uh, I'll put a few in and I'll be ready to cover them. If I can keep them above 30 degrees or so, and as the soil warms up, it'll radiate heat. If you put a little sheet over that, it'll just keep itself warm if we have a, a major storm or major cold front. That one last down from Alaska, so you know, has this cold front come through and then leaves just like overnight, and then it's frost and it's, it's gone. That can happen. Just be aware and be ready. Or you or cheat, you folks with greenhouses. I'm, I'm jealous. I'm just that's that's tr totally cheat cheating. I'm just total cheating. For me, I do. I don't have a greenhouse, but I use the plant protectors or walls of water, or what your grandparents kind of call them. These little tubes you fill up with water, and it collapses around the plant, keeps the soil and the plant warm. Really works well. I've got I don't know a couple dozen of them that I put out there in the gardens. It works. Also. You should really be pruning, finishing up this pruning stuff. You're out of time. You, if you're planning on pruning a fruit tree, do it now, like, like, like today. Turn off the radio right now. Get that podcast off and just go outside and prune. Get done pruning. Uh, my grasses was, were the last thing to prune. So uh, pampas grass. I've got uh, coral, coral forest, forester grass. Coral forester. Let me say that 10 times fast. Um, I finish those things off. You don't want all that old brown grass left over from last year and then your new green blades coming through that. And then you get this mixture, brown and green. You cut it back pretty tight to the ground, maybe a few inches from the ground, so that all the new growth comes up as green because grass is growing really fast. The, the ornamental grasses. Uh, lawns are growing fast too, but ornamental grasses, bigger shrubby kind of grasses, they need to be cut back pretty hard, fertilized with the all-purpose plant food, watered real good, and they will just take off with brand new green growth. Uh, just don't let them, don't, I see too many of them left in the landscapes right now. They're still kind of brown. They need to be shaved back. So just some things I'm doing in my own garden. I've got Lisa Waters Lane coming into the studio with your garden questions. Should be good. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 
after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Go native with Waters' locally grown selection of overachievers. Waters' hand-selected native plants and cactus are famous for continual blooms, natural beauty, and low care. You can do this. A stunning backyard with less water and even less work. And Waters can help. Go native with Waters' selection of overachieving native plants from Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Shop Waters Native Plants in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are Lilac, Columbine, Purple Plum, and our Prescott Poppies. These silk beauties look delicate, but really one of the toughest bloomers in the gardens. These wildflowers come in vivid colors of orange, red, pink, and white that are ideal for the hard-to-grow areas in your yard. You're going to love your backyard again. Prescott poppies can only be found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener, green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. All right, so we are back <laughs> with Lisa Waters Lane. Mm-hmm. She comes in the studio each week with your garden questions. Just what are people people asking? Here's some value and just listening in mm-hmm. to the conversation and the answers that follow. So welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. So uh, what do you want to talk about today? I don't know. What do you want to talk <laughs> no, about? I don't know. <laughs> Why don't we go with the question number one? Well, first, I'm going to let people know we got yeah. ladybugs and Yay. earthworms. Wow. In. Okay, great. So if you've been waiting for those, and I've had lots of people waiting, yeah, let you know we got our first batch in. That's good. That's yeah. a supply chain thing. Mm. It's just totally hiccups. Right. And so we've got shipments coming every week or do you what this freshness? Uh, it's every those. couple of weeks. Couple of weeks. So yeah, ladybugs definitely freshness, but actually the holdup has been the dryness over the in dry- California. Really? Okay. They like ladybugs like a little more moisture to really pr- reproduce well and be happy. Well, we want ladybugs reproducing well. <laughs> that's what we want. So well, that's so. good. And the way you release ladybugs, just mm-hmm. while we're on that subject, sure. it's fun with kids. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna delight in it no matter what. But don't release ladybugs during the day. They fly during the day. They don't fly at night, but they still eat at night. Mm-hmm. And so what you want to do is hose down. Let's say you've got aphids on a rose or we're seeing aphids on apples or whatever you have aphids on. Thrip are out right now. So they're mm-hmm. on birch trees and aspens. So if you see that, you get a package of like 500 ladybugs. There's tons of them. They're going to fly away. When the food's gone. And so what you do is you wet down that rose bush, let's say, Mm -hmm. moisten it, and then release them at the base of that plant in the middle of the night when it's dark out. And then they'll they'll come out of the container, they'll crawl up that that bush, they're gonna stumble across your bugs, eat them until they're gone, Mm -hmm. and then fly up through throughout the yard looking for more. They're ferocious Mm -hmm. appetites. They'll probably lay a few eggs while they're there. They'll mate while mm-hmm. they're they're going, oh, this is a good food source. We should lay eggs here because then our young will be able to feed themselves. And so then they fly off and do that again around the yard. So mm-hmm. from that point forward, you'll see ladybugs sporadically throughout the yard, probably throughout the neighborhood right. as they fly around looking for more to eat. Right. Your, so release them at night mm-hmm. on a wet plant. Yeah. That's how you do it. Great thing about ladybugs. So in their larval stage, which they look completely different than they, their beetle stage, yeah. there's a picture on the container. You should look yeah. at it. They actually eat more in the larval stage than they do in the adult stage. Yeah. Ferocious appetite. Mm-hmm. Eat, I don't know, like, I don't know how many times their body weight right. and just insects. Mm-hmm. So and then the, and the spring process continues. Right. Uh, we'll have uh, praying mantis eggs. Hopefully a little bit later. Right. We do yeah. have earthworms, earthworms right now, too. So great for those vegetable yeah. beds if you're yeah. putting those in. Good time to put those in. And not the giant creeper, you know, not the fishing worms, not right. the night crawlers. These are actually the red wigglers. They're the mm-hmm. ones you want in your gardens. And they don't just lift every, <laughs> everything <laughs> in the yard. These yeah. are smaller, right. uh, yet they do more. They burrow more mm-hmm. uh, through through the garden. So yeah. that's the ones you want, not right. 
not fishing worms. Don't release those in your yard. They'll tear up everything. They're too big, too aggressive. <laughs> too big. Yeah. But anyways, just wanted to let people know we got those in. But our first question is from Jenny in Prescott. She wants some ideas for some really foolproof deer resistant shrubs that get about three to five feet tall and sure. wide. Yeah, that's pretty easy. So deer, so they're pretty thick in certain neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. We're seeing out in the valley areas, the uh, antelope were starting to become a problem. And so this will work for both. Mm -hmm. I would say probably for, for javelina too. So mm -hmm. let's go deer and rabbits. Let's focus in on that. So short, knee high to below hip high shrubs. Number one seller, potentia mm -hmm. or potentella. <laughs> if you're from uh, the Midwest, Potentia, you don't pronounce double L's in Southwest country. So Potentella is a, a shrub that gets yellow flowers. It's five mm -hmm. petals, about the size of a quarter, and it starts blooming at uh, the end of this month mm -hmm. through pretty much till, till about Thanksgiving. It's an amazingly right. long bloom cycle, but animals don't, it looks delicious. Yeah. Hey, don't touch it. Right. Uh, barberry would be another one. It's kind of a pokey thorny thing. It's, it's a bright red, burgundies, chartreuse pink shrubs mm -hmm. not the flowers just the foliage is really really bright it's very mm -hmm. pretty very tough right um companions with potentia mm -hmm. um herbs yep. lavender rosemary very all the herbs the, but those two you can get some that are nice cute ball shaped mm -hmm. uh, spanish lavenders or, or about knee high they do really well. And right. we've got more. So come on in, Jenny. Come on down to Water's Garden Center. We'll give the grand tour. That's so. true. We've got a lot. We've got boxwood, spirea. Yeah. Uh, so there's quite a few things. They're actually yeah. pretty foolproof. You can have a beautiful yard and have animals out there. Mm -hmm. Just with all, you know, we've got, I don't know, 300 choices out there. You're down to the top 25. There's right. just 25 that the animals won't eat. Yeah. We just mentioned, you know, five or 10 of them. So mm -hmm. there you go. Now, speaking of deer, I was just up on the loading dock. Yeah. And there were some deer across the, yeah. the neighbor's property over there. <laughs> there started a herd. I think they're getting displaced. They're putting a, uh, an uh, apartment building over there. Yeah. So I think they're being moved. Yeah. They're just being pushed. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be pushed, but they're no. just moving out of the way. Yeah. That's construction, what it does. So mm -hmm. I hope they don't eat our inventory over there. That would be bad. Well, we got too. a pretty high fence. I yeah. don't think they can get into it. All right. Next question is from Barbara out in Prescott Valley. She wants to know, is it too late to prune her hybrid tea roses? And is it too late to spray with the horticultural oil? Yeah. Good, good. Two good, really good questions. So generally we'll, we'll clean up the roses. Um, usually the month to do that is March. If you're a little late, it's perfectly fine. You're, you're perfectly fine to prune them. It's going to hurt you because you're seeing them actively grow right now, yeah. but that's why you prune them right now. You're, you're going to make that cut and they'll actively grow right out of it. Mm -hmm. And you can spray horticultural oil. Usually we'll cut them back and we'll spray them with an oil so that it takes out all the aphid eggs. Things were there for last year. Mm -hmm. Bugs will actually, thrip will actually hang out at the bottom of that in, in that mulch and come back and attack the flowers. So we're trying to clean it up. So that we're starting with a fresh new plant. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can fly in at us later, but at least we don't have eggs. So we're starting out at, at a zero base right now. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, you can spray horticultural oil. We have one here that's a, it's a little lighter. Mm -hmm. So the heavy oils, I would say, oh, it's probably too late. But the lighter ones, we, we sell, you can spray up to, I think, 85 or 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is oils are so heavy, they'll coat that foliage, and then they get too hot. Mm -hmm. And so you can burn you can burn the foliage. So, but up to about 85 degrees, I think you're fine. If in doubt, come bring your bottle in or you're not sure. So we can tell you what variety of dormant oil or horticultural oil. If you get in it from us, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you get it from other places, it's broadcast everywhere. Be careful. There is a, a temperature range that you don't want to cross over. or You can have damage, heat damage. But oils, they're really good at coating that egg and suffocating it, mm -hmm. coating the insects. And literally, they'll, they'll, they they'll suffocate. They right. just can't breathe. They can't, they can't deal with that oil on them. So great choice. Very organic, inexpensive per gallon to spray. It's a good choice. Okay. Next question is from Jay in Prescott. Wants to know if it's too late to reseed his uh, Prescott grass seed yeah. grass. And then also, um, do you have to rake up those areas that the patches are dead? 
do those need to be raked up or can you just throw seed questions um yes you can seed now in fact it was down at the courthouse i'm helping him with the vietnam memorial huh. is that what it is the soldier that's up there the korean um, no it's korean? not korean i think it's oh. the vietnam memorial or one of those war memorial <laughs> it's a vet it's a veterans memorial that's what it is veterans yeah. memorial helping the rotary club kind of do those gardens back mm -hmm. dealing with the county and they just reseeded the courthouse in Prescott. It's beautiful. Well done. The team that's doing that, you guys are awesome over the top. It looks fantastic. Yes. Was it Jay from Prescott? He he can, you can reseed now too. Generally March is the best month. March and October are the peak windows, but you could do it now. I'd be perfectly fine. Uh, just watch your watering. So as that water, as that grass comes up, you want to make sure you spot, you, you're more accurate with that watering. The thatch, that's the dead stuff, you need to rake that out of there. Otherwise, the seed will float on top and just not germinate. Mm -hmm. You need to get that seed to touch mm -hmm. the soil, that, that dirt, that soil, and it'll germinate within days right now. So there you go. Yes, you can seed. Rake the dead stuff up before you do it. Come in for more. we got a handout on how to do grass seed. So Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, be right back after this. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are Lilac, Poppy, Columbine, and our Purple Twist Plum. This Arizona plum is the ideal purple tree between evergreens. Blooms in a profusion of pink flowers that precede the deep purple foliage large enough to use as a front yard tree, and behaved enough to use as a street tree. Plant pears flanking gateways, driveways, or an orchard-like rose to screen neighbors. Purple Twist Plum can only be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. There's nothing like tomatoes picked fresh from your garden. Waters Mountain Tomato Collection are varieties proven to produce and thrive. Heirlooms, beefsteaks, cherries, naturally grown for local success. Completely organic, never genetically altered, and utterly delicious. They're ready for your garden now. You can grow your own this spring, and we can help. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Shop Waters in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener, local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. So, Waters Garden Center, this is our 59th spring that we've been open. So, the year was 1962, and there were no garden centers in northern Arizona. None in Flagstaff, Payson, White Mountains, Kingman. There are none in Prescott, none in the North Country. There were a few down off a of baseline down in Phoenix back in the early 60s, late 50s, but none up here, no retail garden centers like you know them today. So in 1962, Harold Waters, he still comes in weekly to the garden center. He's very proud of what he's created, and I, I honestly think... This is his baby. He built it. So we're second generation. We, we've we now taken this family business and kept it going. Now we've got a third generation. We've got three, four of our kids. You'll meet four of our, our kids or their husbands uh, here at the garden center any given day. So that's just kind of third generation. These are small companies. He's very proud of that. And I think he misses the energy of spring. I just think he loves to see his, he's a gardener through and through. He still comes, loves coming in and seeing a new colored, geranium a new new type of tomato a new flower new perennials that they've they've crossbred and and had this new color he just loves that excitement of spring of just the the newness the the magic the the energy that a garden center has in the spring season he just he loves that we love seeing him going harold how you doing get over here let me show you something you've never seen before so it's kind of fun uh, so with that being said we're getting a record number of customers this last week. We've never seen anything like it. Part of it's COVID. Everyone's it's still nesting in their backyard. Part of it is there's just more homes, new new homes. There's new, new folks coming in. And so they've got this bare slate in the backyard, and it's just ugly. It's muddy. And they're looking to 
accessorize it, to decorate it, to, to landscape it. And so we're seeing all these new customers in. Uh, record numbers for, for a week, just week for week. We'll see what the month plays out. Looks like it's trending that way, but numbers are very good for retailers that are selling plants, home goods, d decor, that kind of thing. And garden centers are part of that. We're having a good year. God's blessed us. The community has blessed us just how we are. One question that's come up uh, multiple times this week is annual or perennial. Let me just explain that real quick. I know you gardeners, don't, don't check out on me. I know you know what a perennial is, what an annual is, but not, I just, there were a lot of folks that were confused by that. Which, which one lives for a year and then dies? Which one comes back every year? Which one is that? And so um, annuals are those plants that just are glorious for a season, for an annual, for one year, and then they'll typically die off in the winter. Some of them can recede. Some can come back, like California poppy. California poppy, typically people think of it as a perennial, but it's not. It's an annual, but it recedes so profusely that it comes back year after year after year from seed, not from the same root. A perennial will actually hibernate underground, and you almost lose track of where it was. This is like daylilies. Iris, they're coming up right now. Your daffodils have been blooming for three, four weeks now. And so these are all, you know, galardias, salvias, there's, there's all these perennial flowers. They come back, they hibernate underground, and then they come back fresh every year. Well, a California poppy does not come back from its roots. It dies off typically, most, most winters, but it recedes so profusely and so, so easily in the mountains of Arizona that you never just have one year poppies. You've got them every year. Because they like to, in fact, they spread. They kind of, they're wild flowers. They just spread throughout the gardens. That's why they're so magical. They're beautiful, big orange flower. I mean, not just orange, but there's some reds, whites, yellows. Uh, we've got a poppy mix that we sell, a special mix that we make. It has a whole bunch of different colors of California poppies. But they're typically annuals. They come back, they die off in the winter and come back from seed. That's a definition of an annual. Uh, tomatoes. Tomatoes are tropical plants. If, if they go below 32 degrees, they die. And so they, they'll just die right out. That's it. They're an annual. They're done. So by about Halloween, the first week or two in November, they're going to flame out. The frost is going to take them unless you protect them, bring them into a, a greenhouse or take them down to your home in Phoenix for the winter. That's cheating too. That's, 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 uh, that actually works really well. I've got some huge geraniums that I... I let uh, winter with family down in Phoenix, and we bring them back up about in May sometime. And these are monstrous geraniums. But geraniums typically, they'll go down to about mid-20s or so, and then they just flame out. Of course, the mountains of Arizona, we're going to go down to teens, single digits. I don't care where you're at. I live in Humboldt, uh, Dewey, Cordes Junction, Camp Verde. It, it doesn't matter. You get cold. You're in the mountains. You're up in God's country. It's going to get cold. It's going to take those guys out. And that's an annual for you. You have to replant those. Annuals typically have much better color, bigger flowers, more show. If a plant has all flowers, you can't see the foliage. That's typically an annual. That's why they're so popular. You plant them in the spring and they just, they are glorious through November and they typically die out. Perennials, they come back every year, but quite honestly, they don't have the same showy flowers, most of them. Some are getting pretty good. Like if we've got some new galardias or blanket flowers that are glorious and they, they bloom nonstop. Some salvias, nonstop. But most perennials, they, they bloom for about six, eight weeks, and then they're done for the season. Just a nice green plant. So you're always trying to plant waves or, or uh, varieties, groupings of plants. You get some spring, summer, fall bloomers. That's how perennials, you need to plant multiples. That's the difference between an annual and a perennial. There you go. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Gee, my flowers just bloom too much. Said no one, ever. Hi, this is Kenneth Waters. We had a crazy winter and everyone's ready for flowers in the garden. Waters Flower Power is made specifically for Arizona that gives flowers that extra boost to burst into bloom. It's an energy kick in the plants. Get ready for roses that rule, peppers that pop, and tomatoes that triumph. More power to the flowers with Flower Power at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. 
Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandma would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Pink Perfume Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. New pink blooms fill the landscape with fragrance of grandma over and over again in the garden. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, all for under $25. Lilacs like grandma used to grow, and better. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. All right, so we are back with Lisa Waters Lane, <laughs> my favorite gal, which what you got going on. If we're doing this via videos, we can upload it to our which is not LinkedIn, good. Facebook. It's, it's sometimes you. we have been working. Uh, I'm looking a bit tired. Pretty, pretty hard. Yeah, I think you look <laughs> fabulous, dear. You look better than me. I, I'm looking at this hat thing, and I'm going, you know, maybe I shouldn't wear a hat <laughs> now that I look at it. And uh, you definitely should not be wearing your hat backward. You got it cockeyed. I sure. okay. I'm well, sorry. My bad. My bad. So yeah. look. The radio audience doesn't care. They're actually tuned in, go, <laughs> driving down the road, listening. So be careful, folks. Drive safe. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we are. This segment is for <laughs> before you derail too far. For Lisa, trying to get a different opinion, and you are opinionated. <laughs> so uh, her her thoughts on gardening is what's going on. What's going? And you all have been just. I can't believe the team. I just went on the sales for this week. And I just worked the phone to answered phones and, and I answer questions right in the, cause I can kind of do that really fast and kind of quarterback all the customers coming in, help with all the problem. What is this? How, mm -hmm. Is it deadly? Yeah, it's going to kill your plant. What are you talking about? So help them with that. So you, so your team could be out there mm -hmm. uh, just unloading semi. I mean, you could, after semi, you could feel the ground moving. There's so many trucks. Yes. Of plants it was, coming in. It's, it's exciting. It's scary when they all line up down yeah. through and you're like, oh, you just want to turn around, just kind of head some, back out. And some drivers are, are really good, our core, they're regulars Most that come. Are good. And some are just impatient and mean, or I think they've no. been they've been driving through the night too long. Which I here, can I get you soda? You need some pizza? <laughs> well, here. I mean, they have their own time is money issues yeah. for them. Yeah. I, I I understand and I yeah. feel for them, but some of yeah. them just need a hug or something. I don't know. It's, <laughs> yeah. There's a teddy bear or something. But it was it was exciting. So you see, it's like Christmas when you yeah. see all those new plants coming in. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun to, to go on the back dock and see it them is off. fun. So people have been like, people have been itching to get out in their yard. Yeah. They keep calling, are the geraniums in? Are the dahlias in? Are they in? And I'm going, they're in, they're in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're here. <laughs> they're here. <laughs> There's no aisles left. It's nothing but plants. Right. I just <laughs> that way. Yeah. But yeah, so many things in that people have been, been looking for. So um, definitely great things. But I was in the yard. So all the lilacs in the nursery yard are about ready. Some are blooming. Yeah. So right. the white lilacs are in bloom and some of the other ones are starting to come in. So it's a great time to shop lilacs because you can actually see what the yeah. colors are yeah. as opposed to just looking at a tag and going, well, it's supposed to be this color, yeah. but is it really that color? So it's a great time to sh come in and shop the lilacs. Um, and the other thing that I noticed is we actually have two new lilacs for this year. What are they? <laughs> what is called little lady? Okay. The other one's called Little Darling. I gather they're dwarf varieties. They are dwarf. Yeah. yeah, so they get up about four foot tall. Um, kind of have um, lavender, light lavender to purplish blooms on yeah. them. Yeah, but super because most people, I mean, lavenders can, lavenders, lilacs can get fairly good. You don't die, right? They can get six foot. Tall or oh, more. Yeah. Maybe bigger. Yeah, we right. got one that's a 10 footer in the back side yard mm -hmm. and full white blooms. Beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love that one. But not everybody has that kind of room in their yard or yeah. they just want a little showing of a lilac and other stuff. So um, if you're looking for a little smaller footprint for a lilac, come check those two out. Yeah, I saw uh, on the front uh, from Bailey's Nursery up in mm -hmm. Oregon. 
was it Minnesota, wherever they're from. Oregon. Um, Minnesota. They had some beautiful dwarfed lilacs that I was showing oh. off, just about to bust loose. They were okay. still on these huge shipping racks. <laughs> and I shot there. a I shot a <laughs> uh, a video. Just here's how things you if you follow our YouTube channel, you get to see what's going on. Just said, here they are, and here's look. This mm -hmm. is why they're so great. They're right. about to, to bloom. Now, with lilacs, for you folks thinking about one, you don't want to wait too long because what we do is when they start to bloom, we put them on end caps. And, and as everyone goes by, they, the fragrance, just every cart will have one and we'll run out. Yes. So for the next two or three week, weeks, we have tremendous uh, variety, sizes, colors, mm -hmm. and then it will fade out because we'll just we'll run out. There'll be there's no more crop behind this. We right. front load right now and then yeah. and then we'll have some lilacs. But you won't but have, won't as, many have choices. as much choice. Yeah. 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 So the forsythia are the same way. So yeah. forsythia is that yellow blooming one. So we got some show off forsythia in yesterday too. Full bloom. I mean, nice. full bloom. Yeah, that's good. And show off has such a nice big blossom on it. Yeah. It's really a pretty plant. It's a preferred. I think it's better yeah. than, than let's say the Northland or mm -hmm. some of these old, old fashioned varieties. Right. They're breeding new varieties with bigger flowers and more flowers it's all inspiring Definitely. and the great thing about forsythia is it's deer resistant yeah. <laughs> the deer are out and they're hungry yeah. they're foraging so, more than normal i think yeah. through yards right so two pluses for those some of the other great things that we've gotten in that people have been asking for is butterfly bush oh yeah nice so we've gotten a nice variety of butterfly bush from uh like miss molly which is that really bright magenta color miss molly gets four or five foot tall um, we got the true blue butterfly bush some dark nights which is that real dark dark purple yeah. but a standard yeah we even got some pugsleys in and that, i love that, that doesn't name. sound that good i don't know a pugsley <laughs> butterfly bush or budley i love that name because it's only like a two foot tall okay. bush but the bloom on it is the same size as a standard. Oh, really? Oh, that's kind of yes. cool. Kind of like dwarf fruit fruit trees or right. fruit, dwarf peaches or something. Mm -hmm. huh. So just a, a great little shrub. You got to come check those out. We've gotten um, our salvia eyes, And so a lot of people have been looking for that. Um, what's the other name? Autumn, Autumn sage. Autumn sage. Yeah. Uh, so right now we have it in purple. We have some uh, dark radio reds, which are just striking. Uh, hot lips, which is red and white. We've got some raspberry, which oh, that's is neat. a real pretty little color. Yeah. So nice selection of those. People have been chomping at the bit for this. We ran out of reds last week, and yeah. I was I was down the front in the lower greenhouse where mm -hmm. all the perennials are, yeah. and they, everyone wanted one. They were in full bloom. Put them on end caps, and we ran out. We had white hot lips, which is white with a with a red mm -hmm. lipstick kind of color. Uh, pink and purple left, but all the reds were gone. So it's yeah. good to have them restocked. Right? Yes. That's where people don't realize we're restocking every week. And oh, so yeah. if you want to check that out, you go to top10plants.com. Mm. That's our website where we show off the latest inventory as they come in, as we're unloading, uh, we upload those to our website. So you can take a look at that and see what the colors are mm -hmm. that are available. So Pugsley, Pugsley. Uh, Miss Miss Molly. Miss Molly. True Blue. Yeah. And, and I think um, there's some Dark Nights. Okay. And probably a few more. They're all featured. We're still unloading trucks. Yeah, we hardly know what's, what's in because there's so much. <laughs> um, we also got in, and I just love, um, so Honeysuckle, the Gold Flame Honeysuckle. Yeah. So it's different from the Halls, the Japanese Halls Honeysuckle, which most people are used to seeing. Uh, this has a uh, bigger blossom on it, like a multi-blossom. It's kind of a pink and yellow and orange and yeah. white. And it's just so pretty. It reminds me of fireworks. They come up and they just like explode into color. They're beautiful. Not just, just not just yellow, mm -hmm. bright pinks, magentas, whites, yellows, all in the same starburst. You are such a wordsmith. I should be a writer. It reminds something. me of fireworks. I'm like, <laughs> they're just real pretty and I like them. <laughs> That's why we make a good team, dear. <laughs> Very true. Geraniums. So those people that have been waiting patiently for the geraniums, we have probably the most gorgeous, uh, big cachet bowls of geraniums yeah. that I have ever seen. Stunning. They're they over the top. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, nice hanging baskets of geraniums. We got some Martha Washington geraniums. So. I think we had some scented out there too. Scented yeah, geraniums. There's some citronella scented yeah. ones out there. So just a really nice showing of those dahlias. We got some beautiful that's dahlias. That's a month early for some. It's, I know. 
but it's so exciting to see the crops <laughs> finally come in. Yes. Yeah, so we are getting things early. And, you know, you may have to watch those nighttime temperatures a little bit, but how fun to get to enjoy them almost a whole month earlier yeah. than we're used to getting. We're them. trying to bring in the crops. So there's crop shortages right now. Mm -hmm. And so we've got friends that are growing our drink. We know who grows the best geraniums. So you go, hey, Joe, grow our geraniums. We'll take this many and we'll guarantee sale. We'll just take them all. And when they come on, we'll just take them. And so we've got all these arrangements with folks. And then we're trying to grab extras because there's shortages just going, we want to make sure we have it because other folks, they won't. So there you go. Great, Lisa. Some great flowers for spring. You can plant right now here at Waters Garden Center. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are lilac, poppy, purple plums, and our songbird columbine. This graceful beauty dances in the shade of the garden, holding its head high, smiling back at you. This bloomer comes back each spring with lacy green foliage, promptly followed by amazing two-tone flowers. An excellent cut flower that is both deer and rabbit resistant. So hardy, some varieties naturally call Arizona home. Songbird columbine can only be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Go native with Waters' locally grown selection of overachievers. Waters' hand-selected native plants and cactus are famous for continual blooms, natural beauty, and low care. You can do this. A stunning backyard with less water and even less work. And Waters can help. Go native with Waters' selection of overachieving native plants from Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Shop Waters' native plants in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. So we had a really good spring week here at the Garden Center. Folks are coming in for the color, so the flowers and the vegetables. Uh, we've got most of them, tomatoes, peppers. There's a few crops that are delayed, like cucumbers, eggplants. They like it to be really hot. But beans are here. So we've got a lot of different edibles that everyone's familiar with. Okay, And it's time to put those in. We've covered some of that. Uh, but herbs, folks don't realize how easy it is to grow herbs at higher elevations here in the mountains of Arizona, all elevations. So uh, they love bright skies. Herbs love the brighter the day, the happier they are. And they like it dry. They like dry air. They, in, in the south or some of the, the more humid uh, types of, of garden areas, environments, they tend to get they get wilty, they get powdery mildew, they get leaf spots. Here, they don't. And herbs are very drought hardy. You take something like thyme, you can't hardly, it's going to grow whether you water it or not. You can kick dirt at it, curse at it. It's still going to grow and thrive and do well for you. Oregano, the same way. Uh, I, I've got one that I use, an oregano. It's called a gold oregano. It's beautiful. It smells like an oregano, a traditional blue oregano that you're used to. Uh, but this one's gold. And so it's very pretty. It, animals don't bother it. So I put it right out there where the javelina, the rabbits, the deer are. And they seem to leave it alone. But it's really a bright uh, herb that you can put into flower pots, actually. It's so pretty. You can add it to your containers of flowers and put pansies or a calendula or geraniums with it and it's a good contrasting plant so you can have fun with herbs sometimes we, we're a bit too stodgy on on how we this is my herb garden and nothing but herbs are allowed here I, I think that maybe that's that's what your grandparents taught you but we can think outside the box uh, anymore so and I blend many different flowers and herbs even vegetables I tell you what I, I've got a, a, a tomato in a container uh, at the front door, because when a tomato has fruit on it, it's beautiful. And then I'll turn it into, into some art. I'll actually spray paint 
the tomato cage is going to hold it upright. I'll put, I'll paint it, you know, turquoise or, or bright red or, or orange, just a fun, different color. So I'm turning it into almost an art piece, pretty glazed pot, brightly colored cage and a tomato growing out. And when it gets up to size, tomatoes grow so fast. They're, they're, they're impressive. Um, and then they start putting fruit on everyone's going to comment about that. One of the most beautiful plants that you'll find anywhere, peppers, uh, any kind of pepper you want, glossy, deep forest green foliage. And then it puts on these beautiful fruits, whether you harvest them or not, matters not. It's just a pretty plant. And so I often will put peppers into my flowers just because it's a high, it's a tall thing. Then I'll put some petunias that spill over the edge or to kind of I really like to put yellow and blue flowers around my vegetable gardens because the pollinators, bees mainly, uh, flies, uh, moths, they're really attract butterflies. They're attracted to yellow and blue flowers. And so it brings them in. And then while they are pollinating those flowers, they're going to jump up on your tomatoes, on your squash, on your peppers, on your cucumbers. They're going to help pollinate those other plants. Sometimes you know, squash is notorious for being difficult to pollinate, especially if you're in an area that maybe doesn't have a high bee count, a native bee count. Well, if you just put some blue or yellow flowers near it, yeah, what, what few bees are there are going to be drawn in. And they're going to help you pollinate. Otherwise, you're doing it by hand. I hate pollinating squash or pumpkins by hand. A Q-tip, well, swipe it in one flower, get it over the other one. It's just a pain in the derriere. That's a bee's job, not mine. And so I just, I just cheat. And I know which flowers that they sort of like. And I just put them in my gardens. to try. They're pretty. And they help me pollinate my other plants. But we can think outside the box. Another one, probably the most famous. There's two that are really famous herbs at this elevation. One is rosemary and one is lavender. They're both very good here. In fact, I was speaking out at the uh, Capitol Canyon Club. That's Hacienda community. You folks are awesome. Great class on, what was that, last week, whenever that was. Um they were asking, okay, I planted a rosemary and then it didn't winter over. It died. What did I do wrong? I said, you didn't do anything wrong. There's probably 50 different kinds of rosemaries that you can find that, that are grown, that are actually cultivars. You can, you can name them. Most of those are not cold hardy. Most of them are sold down in Phoenix or Palm Springs or Tucson, the lower elevations. They thrive down there, but they don't have enough antifreeze in them to get through a cold winter up here, up here in God's country, where everyone should live. Why, why, why would you live 10 miles from the sun down in Phoenix? It's just too crazy hot. Although I was down there a couple of weeks ago. The weather was, it was pretty nice down there. It was chilly up here. It was beautiful down there. But okay, now I get it, maybe. But still... Here's, you need varieties that can take our cold. And that's the curse of having Phoenix so close to us that uh, they will grow plants there and then ship them up here to the mainly box stores. And then you just find them. And they don't tell you these are, these are you know, perennial or annual. They don't tell you, but there's really only two ground cover or creeping types of rosemary that will go up here. Arp and Huntington Carpet. Those are the only two we sell here at the garden center, here at Waters, because we're catering to this central highlands area. Folks from Sedona come over, Camp Verde Cottonwood come over for Trader Joe's. I get it. And then you visit us while you're here. Uh, the Kingman. I know what you all are doing. You're coming to the VA and you're going to hit the Prescott VA and then we're, we're the garden center coming and going out of town. I love it. Seligman, same thing. And so we know what's going on with that, but you need to buy the plants that are right for those colder areas, this higher elevation, even Kingman. You're, you're below 4,000 feet. You still get cold. It still gets chilly enough to kill off those desert varieties. You got that wind that just whips through there. Uh, I mean, Sedona, you got that cold air that spills over the ridgelines and settles in on you. So you still are a zone seven or eight. You're still, you still have that four season. You've got to get a plant that can handle that winter cold. Desert varieties won't do that. So Tuscan blue is the big shrub form. Great big tall one. I've got a new one called uh, barbecue rosemary. Puts on very long stems of, 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 of rosemary. And, and you're supposed to pick those off, strip off the foliage, 
then you use that stem as a skewer. And so now it permeates that rosemary flavor through the inside of the chicken or pork and it permeates out. It's kind of fun. It's trivial. If you have a guest over, you can wow them by you got your own barbecue rosemary skewers that you leave a little tuft of green at the end. They go, whoa, that's pretty impressive. You've got to be a gardener. Yep, I learned this from this guy on this radio show I heard. He's got barbecue rosemary. It's great stuff, and it it's super fun. So it's just an easy one. You can have fun with gardening, too. Other ones that you'll find, oh, lemongrass is here, wheatgrass you're finding. Now, some of those are harder to find. And so we specialize. Your independent garden centers, they're going to specialize in herbs. Your box stores are going to have the rosemary, lavender, and maybe basil, and that's it. We've got eight different varieties of basil, from purple ones to Mediterranean ones to your traditional Italian sweet. We've got lots of varieties. You're only going to find one basil at a box store. So it's a complicated crop to grow. It's really a specialized number of people that grow uh, herbs. And so they just don't turn fast enough for the box stores. But your independents, we're kind of plant nerds. We love getting into that. But your herbs are going to do amazingly well for you uh, just try them in containers or in the ground but any garden plot they're going to thrive and so the ones that, and generally they're going to need a good draining type of soils they're they're drought hardy they're very tough animals don't eat herbs they don't like the flavor they don't like the taste they don't like the smell in fact some of them i'll use as repellents to keep them away from my other flowers they might like and so herbs Try a couple fun ones this year in your gardens. I guarantee you're going to do well with them. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are Lilac, Poppy, Purple Plum, and our White Night Candy Tuft. Masses of fragrant white flowers cover mounds of perennial green foliage. Extreme heat and cold tolerance, this award winner repeatedly blooms without deadheading for super easy care. Butterflies, bees, hummingbirds are going to love your backyard again. White Night Candy Tuff can only be found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Waters companion plants for April are Purple Twist Plums, Perfume Lilacs, Columbine, and Arizona Gallardia. Gallardia is the perfect mountain perennial with huge fiery flowers on a compact plant. She loves the heat and super drought hardy. You can count on this bloomer to show off all summer long in raised beds, containers, or in the garden. Havelina and rabbit proof. This bloomer is a must-have Arizona plant. Arizona Gallardia, found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So I had someone really push back. We were offended by our phone message, which we're generally not an offensive company. I could, we generally are very happy, outgoing, but but we are we are a spiritual company. I'm not. We don't push religion. We're not going to. You're you're going to go to hell. Be safe. We don't do that. That's just rude. Uh, so, but but we are up front going. We we are a we're Christian based, faith based, uh, Judeo Christian values that we run by. Which is, we're, we're known as being honest and fair, and which is what we're noted for. That's that's our claim to fame. And so uh, we're not after it for just the money. We're after it for lifestyle, and we love our community, and we get back. All those values that, that small companies, I think, really cherish and try to thrive and, and make our communities better. That's, that's what we're noted for. Anyway, we, we, uh, I wrote a, a, a – we are very professional with our phone messaging. So we change – Lisa and I change it every couple of weeks by the holidays. And so we're going to be closed on Easter Sunday. We just wanted to be up front a couple of weeks beforehand so people realize we're not going to be open that Sunday. We'll be open the Saturday and the Monday thereafter. Because of our values, we're not going to be open on Sundays. We're just going to stand. We never have been, and we never will be. That's just who we are. We're not preaching it, folks. We're just doing that. Um, so I apologize to the person that I offended. In fact, let me do this. Would you mind? I'm going to try to phone. The, can I phone 
the message and play it over here and you tell me if it's offensive to you it's like 30 seconds it's a little pre not preachy it's a little advertising wise because we're telling people where to find things here at our store but tell me if it's offensive let me know if 10 of you get back to me 10 of you atheists if you're just totally offended oh my gosh i can't believe you do that i will pull that i will pull it and change it like tomorrow if i don't if it's just a one-time wonder Maybe that's a one-time thing. Let me, let me see if I can dial this. Hold on. Bear with me just a second. Okay, here we go. And it's, it's dialing. Hold on. Hi, this is Lisa Waters Lane, owner of Waters Family Garden Center, and I'd like to personally thank you for calling. We love helping gardening friends each day, 8.30 to 5, and open Sundays from 9 to 5. Want to know if we have a plant at the garden center? Visit Waters Online Store at top10plants.com. Buy online or pick up in the store. We'll be closed Easter to attend church and mass with family and the feast that follows. We're back into full spring mode on Monday, bright and early. Celebrate yourself with one of Lisa's specially designed Easter baskets. We've grown 200 heavenly flower baskets that start any spring celebration outright. For outstanding gardening advice, press 2 or simply stay on the line. Water's accounting, they're at 3. Let me connect you now. So we put that message together because two things people always call and ask. Are you open? So we give the hours. And do you have? We could spend all day long a team of six people, which is do you have, do you have, do you have? And they have us running around two and a half acres of nursery to see if we still have. And some of these things change by the hour. And so we just put it on there. We have our website that we, you can see the stuff that's in the garden center online. We set the store up. And so, but the, the Easter thing was almost a passing throwaway. Didn't mean to offend. And if that is offensive, let me know. I'll, I'll t- totally change it. I, I don't want to be that. So we weren't, weren't trying to be preachy. We just wanted to let, let you know why we're closed on Easter. In case you're wondering. Anyway, it's, it's the planting season. Uh, Go out and garden more. It makes you feel good. And so if you're a churchgoer, enjoy Easter. If you're not, don't. So, but but enjoy a tomato. Herbs grow really amazingly well. And you can plant things now. Just have your frost cover or a, something to throw over those in case we see a cold snap. You can protect them. Take your gardening hat. Throw it over your new plantings. It, that's enough to keep the, the frost off of those new plantings for your success. So uh, we're here at the garden center. We love talking to the fans at the store, the whole family, our family dogs work here. So we'd love to talk and help you with any of your garden needs. You can grow your own vitamins. We can show you how to grow your own vegetables and herbs for a healthier you. Waters plants are entirely organic with plant genetics never altered and non-GMO. Natural vitamins straight from the garden with naturally healthier herbs and vegetables. Healthier plants for a healthier you with plants from Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Shop Waters in store or online at watersgardencenter.com. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.